Astro Athens. Over all of these games today, I'm going to discuss time travel and time dilation. I had a really great question asked to me during Skype a Scientist. Someone asked me, hypothetically, if you were to stop moving in time, would you appear to be moving backwards in time? And well, to answer that question, I'm going to use this game of checkers. Now take, for instance, this checker and this checker. Now let's make this checker Bob, this checker Alice. If they are both moving throughout time at the same velocity, then they are time traveling together. However, hypothetically, as this question asks, is if suddenly Alice was to freeze in time and Bob was to keep moving forward, according to Bob's perspective, it would appear that Alice is moving back in time. But according to Alice, she is now stuck in the present moment. So she is nor moving, she is neither moving back in time nor moving forward in time. She is stuck. But Bob, who continues to move throughout time, is actually moving past, forward into time, and it looks as if Alice is moving back in time. This simple concept really goes over how time truly is relative. Because if you're at different velocities, different places in the universe, time really does work differently. However, the other question asks, how about the speed of light? Because does the speed of light change depending on where you're traveling throughout space? And well, no, the speed of light is actually a constant and light speed is actually used to determine distances throughout our universe. For instance, uh, the Milky Way galaxy is about one size across to about 100,000 light years across. To get from one side to the other, it would take you 100,000 years moving at the speed of light to get from one end of the Milky Way galaxy to the other end. And that would be moving at about 300 million meters per second. Those of you that don't know the metric system too well, it's about 670 million miles per hour. So to, to get a vehicle to move that quickly is going to take quite a lot of technology. Another great question I had asked today was actually, how will we ever achieve time travel? And do you think it would have to do with moving at the speed of light? And it has to do with, you know, Bob and Alice again. And um, they were asking, if you were to move at the speed of light, would you then hypothetically be able to move back in time? Now, my understanding right now, the answer to that would be no, uh, because first of all, there's a lot of complications when it comes to moving at the speed of light. For one, uh, we are made up of atoms. Light is made up of energy, highly charged particles. So if we were to move at the speed of light, we would actually be broken down from our physical matter into, well, light energy, just like all the light that you see spinning around right now that is reflecting off of this disco ball. This disco ball actually makes me think of something. Because just as it's spinning, and it is reflecting light that is moving at the 300 million meters per second as we speak, it makes me think about the event horizon that you can find around a black hole. Because what starts to happen is right around the event horizon around a black hole is you have a coalescing, a, co a, a collection of stars and dusty materials that you find in our universe. And that region is moving so rapidly fast, being pulled in by the gravity of the supermassive black hole, that there are theories right now that say it is possible if we were to ever get a spaceship to go around and travel around the, the event horizon of the supermassive black hole, it may potentially be able to move throughout time, do time travel. But then again, we would have a lot of complications of actually moving um, not only close to, but at the speed of light, but also not getting pulled in by the gravity of the supermassive black hole and well, being stretched like spaghetti and s pulled to smithereens. So thank you so much for joining me, and until next time, cheers.